everyone. Thanks for tuning in on this Sunday afternoon. This is a very special live stream isolation interview as we are all now <laughs> quarantined and permanently grounded for the indefinite future. With me is a special guest, a band that I followed for a long time. I met some of the guys years ago, Alex from Psycho Stick. Please say hello, Alex. Hello, hello. How's it going? You're saying you don't want to like pass a mic back and forth and like spit on it a little bit. I'm and, not saying and share I that. don't. I'm just saying you may not like that and your neighbors might. Be I can make the you. drive. You're not that far. <laughs> this live stream is going to be real intense for what a good four hours. See, you're we're both <laughs> central standards, so that could work OK. Or get like, just, yeah, like, same time zone. Yeah, it's all fine. No, no, I promise I'm fine. We'll just share the mic too. like just put it between yeah, us, yeah. you know, and just breathe. There's, on there's only other. one mic. So, uh, yes, yeah. exactly. Hey, you know, I've seen worse at festivals. My favorite is like when they have to do the hand back and forth, but like they have to, they don't, the cord's not long enough. So it's like the. Oh, God. Man, I just call it flashbacks. Trust me, I have done some, I've done a lot of interviews, and sometimes you just, you just got to deal with it. (laughs) Good for you for being a trooper. That is really awesome for you. So thank you for all as people start climbing in. Thanks again. Psycho Stick is doing something cool, and you had one just a couple days ago. You are one of the new trendsetters of doing live stream per- sessions. So, yeah, so... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Just so like you got to do your first one here at um, Psycho Stick headquarters, I guess is a good way to say it. So how... Yeah. Just looking back on that, how was your, your own personal reaction to all of that being in there after it was over? How did it feel to you for me doing this? Personally, I think it's been really, really fun. It's been really cool to be able to share music with people from afar because we've never played places like Australia or Russia or yeah. anything like that. So we actually started streaming last year because uh, we've been tapering touring off a little bit because the tour lifestyle is really challenging. It like wears on you. So like, let's go out for three months. You know, mm-hmm. just uh, it's a very it's a hard thing to do. So we've been trying to get more into streaming anyway. And so Rob, my singer, did the video stuff primarily, along with Murph. And Kooks is our lighting guy and everything else production. And then Josh did the audio. I didn't do anything. I just show up and play drums for these things and try to promote them a little bit. So I've been really excited about it. Yeah, but the last one we did last week was really, really fun. It was, even though it was only the four of us, we didn't have our crew guys because they're really? at home. So like you yeah. guys were just like set up with your instruments and there was no one behind the cameras or anything like that there was no yeah the lights we just pressed you know go and they just did their automatic Uh. thing and then uh if you look closely rob has a little keypad next to his ipad and the keypads for the videos okay so that's where all his commands he was actually controlling that's intense Um, yeah wow i see i never thought that i actually did think someone was behind the scenes or at least somehow that's typically yeah doing the video changing camera changing, yeah everything like that so usually uh, that's Murph doing the video stuff on off to the side, right, but okay. he's been at home. So yeah. So yeah. You what were can just, you, do? you were just kind of sitting there like a king on your throne, having everyone <laughs> else do the actual work for the presentation while you beat the drums. Damn right. I got my drum lights and they flash a lot, and that's a lot of fun. Exactly. And then I just sit there wearing, and you need to start wearing a crown. Is what I'm getting at then. A crown. <laughs> yes. Like Joy Jordison back in the day. Yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. No. That that might it might kind of uh, clash with some of the flow for the other uh, styles that Psycho Stick is going for. But I still think yeah. it's awesome what you guys did. So now looking at it, like, because that was almost a two-hour stream, yeah, yeah, if I'm correct. So that's like a full show and then some for a lot of people, yeah. too, which is awesome. Typically, we, we've been doing, when we headline, we've been doing live, at least, about an hour and 15, and that's mm-hmm. our full set. So this time we did a full set plus a lot of talking and a lot of thanking people and stuff like that. So it came out to hour 45 or whatever that was so yeah um we've been mixing it up like some of our streams will do like a little mini set and then talk for 30 minutes or whatever just hang out and then do another mini set and then talk but this time we just wanted to have like a real concert and do a a whole bunch of songs because people are bored at home so yeah pretty much i think mix it up yeah and like what i like i was talking to you about this briefly before that was such a good presentation of no dead air, no guys just looking around going, all right, uh, you want to you want to play the beer song now? Something. For yeah. Me? You want to play something for do? All right. Whatever. You guys actually you got to have a set list. Exactly. Yes. You that's number one. Oh. <laughs> but you actually took it serious. Like you guys were talking to the crowd. You performed. Yeah. It was a full show and it felt like everyone was involved. You And also all the stuff that like Rob did and everyone else, like making sure the chat was fed through and everyone could see everything yeah. that was going on. 
You, it's important. Like I loved the Code Orange live stream, the Dropkick Murphys live stream on. Uh, I didn't Patrick's see the Dropkick Day. one. That was a lot of fun too. But was you that one guys, good? okay, cool. Yeah, you guys amplified certain things, like actually integrating so much with like the rents calculator or the rents uh, charts, like the actual right. the actual chat feed on video the different angles and stuff for like the record that. yeah yeah i really want to thank everybody again because all the people that participated and held help us pay rent it's like that's what keeps us afloat yeah. i mean that's true for any band but i mean we're able to do the streams because of that mm -hmm. so so much gratitude there yeah but um i think that's what i there's such a discord with like rock stars in this day and age it's not like the <laughs> 80s where every rock star is rolling around in cash and drugs and hookers backstage and they go home and just count their money. Rock stars. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. The very first thing I say in the book that I wrote that I'm holding up right now okay. is that my very first line in the preface, I am not a rock star. I'm a musician. Oh, so very well just saying, said. I don't, I don't like the term rock stars. It, it just sounds like really pompous to me. Okay. We're just people. We are people that play music and we have a good time and we are not above other people just because we get to perform in front of a lot of people. So mm. it's not like this hierarchy where I'm better than you. I'm going to go sit on my bus and ignore everyone. No, it's like if people are going to support us, we're going to talk to them. We're going to meet them, you know, not shake their hands right now, but typically it shows we go to the merch right after we play mm -hmm. and we talk to anybody that's there i'll sign whatever well almost anything within reason, yes <laughs> within reason yeah it's just it's important you gotta be you gotta have humility do you think that attitude is more widespread now for most rock bands that you've toured with that you've played with at festivals whatever it is do you think that's more common now that you see more humility and like gratitude as a good way to put it towards the fans <laughs> To be fair, my perspective is, of that is only this little window okay. of how long I've been going to concerts and the type of concerts that I go to. Because I go to a lot of underground bands, a lot of like gotcha. up-and-coming hardcore and metal and punk and stuff like that. I don't go to a whole ton of like huge shows unless it's like Slipknot or I've, I've seen Korn, you know, like okay. bands like that level. Mm -hmm. I don't typically go to enormous Know, massive festival shows typically okay. so um in the the scenes that i enjoy like we were talking about code orange before and yeah. i saw vane recently vane, okay, vane was yeah. amazing but bands like that they really do appreciate it because they're still you know they're upcoming they're they appreciate what they have yeah they're not just taking it for granted so i really that's that's what i really try to get across to people like that's really important mm -hmm. to not be a a total douchebag. Yeah, I I think that's a good standard for everyone too. That should be like you have. That's a mantra that you should say before you go out before every show. So it's like gotta remind yourself. All right, don't uh, be an asshole. Don't do it. it. Don't be a jerk. Not to one person. So good for you for having <laughs> that attitude too. So a couple things I do want to bring up for upcoming stuff. But first, I want to highlight because we talked about this briefly. While on tour, while working with Psycho Stick, you not only got your degree, you also wrote a book. So yeah, yeah. First question: so, When do you sleep? I sleep every night, and I sleep a lot. Really? I think it's important. You got to have that. What do they call that? It's like uh, sleep hygiene, or, or they, there's some, you know, <laughs> we're going some in medical term for now. it. Sleep hygiene. You got to have nice be sleep really hygiene. Important. Um, here's the thing. Um, I carve out time, and I'm very particular with my time. Um. If something's important to me, like reading, for example, I carve out time, just like I do eating, just like I do sleeping. Okay. Those things are very important to me, obviously. Like, you got to eat. In my view, I carve out the time so I don't let it get filled up with other things that don't matter as much. Okay. So when I make a priority for myself, like from 2011 to 2017, I was touring and taking classes online. And I nice. got from day one in college all the way to the last day of my master's degree. So I carved out time and made sure that I did that first before social media or hanging out or yeah. anything else. Like, it's just you got to make it a priority. Okay. That's, so that's how I do it. I think that's huge. I think that's good advice to say that you can multitask for important things, even if they're difficult. It is yeah. possible. So it's actually, I yeah. just think that's really interesting. So with your book also, if you want to talk about, about that a little bit. Uh, sure. Because I just learned that you yeah. wrote wrote the book a couple of days ago. So, like, in a brief summation, what does this really entail outside of that very first line? You're not a rock star. You're a musician. Okay. So, yeah, this book, it's called Dichotomies, Lessons from a College Life on Tour. Okay. If you can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It shows. I don't know how. I, do. <laughs> I see the brain. I see Alex oh, yeah. Dantre. Yeah, I see it. There yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. 
So this is my book. Chrono- uh, it's the, the chronicles of me going on tour and going to college, doing both. It's like each chapter is a year. Okay. So chapter 2011, chapter 2012, okay. all the way through chapter 2017. And you get to see from my crazy life, like all the things that were happening. It's very frenetic. It's just a frantic tone to the book, like bouncing back and forth from music to school to some crazy fan thing or, or whatever. And it's just the story of how I did all of that stuff. So I wrote it in 10 days uh, last October and okay. then got it out by November. So that's huge. That's, it's yeah. my life's nuts, man. <laughs> I'll say it. That's why I asked, like, when do you sleep? Because it seems like you have it, but now it makes sense that you carve everything out. You actually know how to prioritize specific things and everything, which is good. I think it's that. It's also uh, another huge thing on the opposite end mm -hmm. is limiting your susceptibility to distraction. Mm -hmm. And that's becoming increasingly important, especially in the psychology world. There's like a whole field of distraction studies and things like that and like social media addiction and, and all that kind of stuff. And people are training themselves to be distractible. Right. And that started largely with Google and internet searches and hyperlinks and pop-ups and everything else that's constantly bombarding us. And now we have these things in our pockets that are constantly yapping at us day in and day out. And if you don't like completely cut it off, how are you going to focus on anything? It's like, you got another email. It's like, I don't care. I'll get to my email in an hour when I need to, you know, cause I need to work on something else right now. So that's how I do it. I limit the distractions mm -hmm. And I carve out time. So on, on the two fronts, that's how I am able to accomplish whatever I'm trying to do. Do you think with all the isolation situation that we're having now, like the forced isolation for this, the pandemic that's going on, do you think that's mm -hmm. going to become more of a problem? Because social media is going to be more of a crutch now because this is our only communication at some point. Because hmm. I was thinking about that too. That's an interesting question. Yeah, because I was thinking about that too. It's like, okay... I get annoyed with a lot of social media, but at the same time, I know I rely on it for certain things. Now yeah. that this is a communication tool that's going to be necessary, is this going to exacerbate many of the problems? Uh, for example, Twitter is like every other hour, Twitter seems like a mess. Oh, does it? I like just, uh, everything on Twitter is just, everything's on fire, everything's funny, everything's fine. Everything's on fire, everything's funny. You know, it always feels like that. <laughs> Is this yeah. Like now that everyone is logged in at home on the couch in bed wherever, I don't. I don't know. I just feel like that's something. So, I'm I'm of two minds about that. Uh, one is greatly influenced by my guitarist Josh. The other day he said something to the effect of the importance of social media now. It's actual. Like there's an actual purpose to it now because people are lonely. They're disconnected. They they need to speak to other people because we're a very social species. Mm -hmm. So there's an actual reason for it now. It's not just like, you know, check out a picture of this spot. I saw that on the floor or like, look at my spaghetti or, or whatever. You know, it's, it's not just look at my spaghetti, essentially. Yes. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. But now you can connect with people in a meaningful way if you choose to. So we all have the opportunity to either be leaders and talk about something optimistic or positive or look at this, this new project i'm working on if you're like crocheting or, or whatever you know just yeah. sharing that with the world or you could speculate about things that you have no idea about and panic and and talk about all this negative stuff that you don't really have any idea about but you saw it on buzzfeed so which one do you choose to do yeah. it's like you can either do it in a positive way or just exacerbate the situation like you said so I'm, i yeah. choose to try to push a little levity into the world if people want it I mean, that is something to say, like you could use this time for productivity and like self, mm -hmm. uh, self improvement, I guess is a good way to say yeah. it because now like there's no excuse, man, I've always wanted to learn how to play guitar. Well, YouTube has what roughly 5 million guitar video intros. So yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're thinking to yourself, I've always wanted to read Alex's book, then yeah, now's your chance. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it available online as well? Yeah. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. So it's you can actually just click the Psycho site. Yeah, so you can actually just click a couple buttons and then have that book pretty soon and yeah. then you're all set. Yeah. So there's no reason. And it's worldwide. You, you can go. get it worldwide too. Yes. So. so I'll put a link for it in the comments too. So that way cool. people after this live Thank you. can check it out. Yeah, that's easy to do. So one cool thing coming up, you're doing another live stream with Psycho Stick. Yep. Yep. So we're, okay, so I have something to announce. We haven't actually told anybody this, but we're thinking about we haven't actually fully decided. 
but we're thinking about doing a stream every Thursday okay. for the foreseeable future as long as the quarantine lasts. Okay, so this so, is the, week, the Thursday break from isolation yeah. and sanity to, to check in with From all the stuff. craziness, yeah. like come to hang out with us on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. You know, that's, that's yeah. what we're thinking about doing. So you heard it here first. Uh, I haven't actually announced that yet, but okay. that's what we're thinking about doing. Okay, so potentially I, this could be the new announcement of Thursdays with Psycho Stick. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so like when we were kids, we ran home to watch Disney Afternoon and Fox Kids and stuff yeah. like that. Now it's rush home to watch Psycho Stick, except we don't have to rush. <laughs> we're already here. All you got to do is turn on your computer or your phone or whatever it is and then yeah. watch us be silly. That's awesome. I mean... There's so many cool things you can do that with, I think. I think um, Just with, like, different songs. Taking song requests probably could become something wild that you could do. Yeah, we actually, uh, a couple of the streams uh, last year, we did a few where we had this huge bucket. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the bucket of destiny. And people could uh, buy uh, basically like a raffle ticket. Like, right. you pull it out of the bucket, and then we have to do something. On one of them, we had to play a song, like, twice as slow. And so it's like, you know, just like... Uh, messing with the songs in some way okay. or another one we might be blindfolded or, or whatever it was and that was a lot of fun but it, it was kind of messing with some of the music too so we put a hold on that for the time being but mm -hmm. we might bring it back at some point i'm not sure that's intense though um i do like the idea of okay play a song twice as fast but the drummer has to play twice as slow so you're like just oh my god one, two, <laughs> but everyone else is blazing we did it with uh, the song Sandwich. We did that one twice as fast. It's like, da 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 It's like way too much energy, like way too fast. And it was really funny because then Josh is like, da 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 and just trying to play the crazy part. So it was it was pretty funny. And then it kind of collapsed at the end. I was going to say, that could really wear you out like in the middle of the set. So maybe save that for the end when you're ready to cash out. So... Uh, just just push through. It'll be fine. <laughs> give me a minute. I know we're live. Just give me a minute. Like, oh. uh, so there's Do a link break. for that in the comments below already. So you can set a reminder for everyone that's watching this. Awesome. And then also after the live stream premieres of them, it'll just be the actual recap so that we can watch the whole performance. So it'll be the same link. Just set that reminder to check in for Thursdays. So Awesome. Yeah. So now that unfortunately you have some tour dates, unfortunately postponed, just like every yeah. other band. So... Mm -hmm. We're hopeful, or at least I am, that festivals and stuff will continue to come up. I know one festival that you've always been a part of is Too Many Games, or have been for years. Yeah. So you've been working so, on that stuff. Yeah, Too Many Games is the best. Like It's just run by these wonderful people, and I don't know how on the forefront they want to be, so I won't like tell sure, or yeah, say their names to, no, or, anything anything like that, but... or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, what's your experience with Too Many Games so far? It's, it's my favorite convention okay absolutely okay. like uh, possibly my favorite festival it's just it's a good time and i will say this uh conventions really had to grow on me because i'm not a gamer i don't watch anime i don't oh. do twitch or anything like that i'm, I'm a different type of nerd i'm a, like a psychology and neuroscience okay. kind of nerd not a video game nerd mm -hmm. and so the first couple years that we started doing conventions like too many games mm -hmm. Um, and then a bunch of others, I was so, I just felt so awkward because I didn't know what was going on. I was like, I don't know what that creature is. Okay, you're a, a Man, furry I never person. Thought of it like, that way. I don't like, know what's see, happening. To see all these wild costume and like cosplayers yeah. walking around you just in line to like go to the bathroom or just whatever. Yeah. And saying, like, I don't know how to, are these the same language I'm going to be speaking to people? I never thought of yeah, it Yeah, that that's way. the thing. That's how, okay, so that's how I felt, but I found a solution. Um, I was at MAGFest. Uh, that was 2016 20. Yeah, that sounds right. 2016. That's where I saw you guys. That's where I shot you guys there. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I felt incredibly awkward because the entire event for me personally, I felt like everyone was in on all these jokes and I was the sole person out of like 20,000 people yeah. who didn't understand yeah. what was happening. Okay. So over the next year, I developed a way to counteract that. And that was basically admitting it and being upfront about it. Be like, Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Please explain it to me. And then they get excited, and then they share, oh, this is from this game. And they tell me about the character, rather than being like, why are you here? Who the fuck are you? You know, just instead of just, you know, I, I admit my confusion. I'm upfront with it, and I, it's more playful now. And then people understand that. And I think there is a little bit more empathy about the whole thing. Like, I'm not just a weirdo. Mm -hmm. I'm just a weirdo that's out of place. That's all. So then I, they kind of took me under their wing collectively as a community. And then places like Too Many Games, I love it now. Mm -hmm. I... I 
enjoyed it, but I just felt super awkward at first. But now I really enjoy it, so it's it's great. That's huge because I've never been to too many games, but I keep hearing great things about it. Been to you gotta go twice, yeah, and that's what I keep hearing too. I think one of the guys I actually know that helps run it, and like I keep saying because I've only been to Philly twice for festivals. I've never been to like a convention okay. or anything like that, so. Yeah. Here's this one's a little bit outside of Philly, too, so it's oh, a lot okay. easier for parking. It's, like, way easier for parking. Oh, that's so, even better. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the festivals I went to in Philly, they were, like, $50 for parking. So. This one's free. <laughs> oh, so, okay, so the exact opposite. It's just that's a, even better. It's just, yeah, it's basically a suburb in you know, a nice area and a huge convention center with a massive parking lot. You can do whatever you want. So. That's huge. Okay, so... I asked this to literally, like, a lo not everyone, but a lot of bands and musicians that I always come across with that have toured endlessly almost. Um, do you have any great stories live when you're on the stage, when you're looking out and see fans, whether that's a crazy fan story, something hilarious, um, weird, painful, gross, heartwarming, whatever I it is, so... Because you said gross, I was going to ask if that qualifies, because I have yeah. the worst, the worst tour story I am okay. aware of. Okay, I'm, um, I'm curious. I want to hear it, because I've heard some gross ones, but I want to hear what you have. I'll try to keep it concise, because it's a pretty extensive story. But okay. we were in, I think it was Port Charlotte, Florida, I believe it was. Okay, and um, you said Florida, so that's... All yeah, right. yeah, this crowd yeah. got drunk and it was a really really late night like way too many bands and it just went on and on and on like way behind schedule everybody was just plastered so we finally get on stage and this guy is just he was too drunk and he kept like running up and like rah, rah, just yelling stuff and then hitting uh maddie's bass strings Ooh, while no, he's playing that's a, that's a hard no and uh -huh. maddie's like get the fuck out of here like yeah. trying to like push him away and he just kept doing it and so eventually Maddie went whack right across his face. And he's like, oh, he got like kind of startled and kind of, you Turned know, slunk off. off a little bit. And then a few minutes later, he came back and he started like pestering Maddie again. And Maddie's like, God damn it. So he was also sick at the time, Maddie was. So he was blown his nose to a tissue. Mm -hmm. This is back in the day before the, before the corona this, craziness. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can actually do this. So he blew his nose into a tissue and then he held it out to the crowd, like just being gross. Like, who wants it? Everybody's like, ew, gross. Yeah. The guy like runs up and he snatches it out of his hand. And then he goes, uh, Did he actually he put it eats in his it. mouth? He started chewing it and swallowed it. <sighs> he swallowed that thing. That's not drunk behavior. And we're just like, That's way more than drunk behavior, though. That's not even fluid yeah, yeah. behavior. So we started calling it not eating drunk. That's how drunk that guy was. Yeah. And we were so horrified. We didn't know what to say. Like we said, the dead air thing before. Like, we, it was just dead air because we're on stage. It's like, yeah, oh no, God. you can't. <laughs> show has to pause at that for a moment, whether that's. So we're just like, or, yeah. oh, my God, what do we do? Just. What's the next song? Let's just start playing another song. <laughs> Get us out of here. <laughs> so that was horrific. And I don't know what happened to that guy. He's probably not alive anymore. Can you imagine what else he's eaten while he's gotten uh, drunk? Man. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Man. So true story. That was not I didn't even have to elaborate. Like, I mean, exaggerate. I mean, yeah, um, that's yeah. A, that totally took me by surprise. I don't know if I've heard that when that's shocking before from a drunk. Yeah. Man. So that's... shocking. He was he was not eating drunk. Yeah. Oh man, I hope Yikes, no. Dude. I this is the type of thing. I hope nothing ever tops that. Because think how bad <laughs> well, it okay. would be. So uh, I have uh, I have one more. It's not it, as yeah. bad, but it's also it's a little startling. So we were playing in Lincoln, Salina. I'm sorry, not uh, Nebraska. Nebraska. I think it was Salina. Is that in Kansas? Ooh, I don't know. It was in Nebraska. I know, okay, like Nebraska. central Nebraska, whatever. Sure. Uh, we were at this venue, and this guy came up, and he's like, "Hey, can you sign my colostomy bag?" Ooh. And he pulled it up. We're like, wait, what? And he had a bag, and you could see like the the feces yeah, in it, the waste. Yeah, yeah, why the waste. He, why would he? And he's like, sign that. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm getting surgery tomorrow. I was supposed to go today, but I wanted to come to your concert instead. And we're like, dedication, <laughs> dude. Do not, do not skip your surgery to go to a concert. I know we don't come to Nebraska enough, but Jesus, man. So yeah, we're like. Okay, and he's like, "You want to poke it?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> so we're like, we're "Like, 
poking his colostomy bag and the feces is like squishing around. I'm like, this is weird. So we all signed the thing and that was that. And I hope he's alive still. Yeah. But again, I haven't seen him since. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's harmless because the colostomy bags are usually pretty tough. They have to be for what they're yeah. like, what they like holding in the yeah. pumped into. But if and he wasn't like in the pit or anything. Right. So well, yeah. I, but it's weird because I assume he's fine. Why? Because that's not a permanent thing. Then is he going to put that on his shelf? After surgery? Maybe, maybe he'll just have the thing cleaned out and have it on a shelf or something. I don't know. I don't know it's, how it's I would show it off to people that came to visit your house, though. You know? I, I don't... Uh, that's just me. I mean, <laughs> the snot eater is still way worse, but still, that's unique. Yeah, it's way worse. That was, that was harmless. You know, it was, like, pretty weird, yeah. but in a fun way. Whereas the snot-eating drunk guy, that was just... I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad like he didn't wait for you in the parking lot or anything, the snot eater. No, I'm pretty sure he got sick and had to go home. Like, it's just... He might have already been uh, sick, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Well, I'm glad you're still oh, here after some stories like that and still... Yeah, I'm glad we're still alive. Trucking yeah. on. Yeah, man, that's intense. The wor the funniest thing I've ever heard of anyone signing was Grandson, who's an alternative artist. Uh, he, someone asked him to sign his ba their baby. Like, literally just, here's my, in here's my newborn, <laughs> sign his belly. It's like... Okay, don't put it on eBay, I guess. Yeah, sell your kid. Like, it's autographed. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming from you in this downtime, I guess is a good way to say it, while you guys are isolated. Um, you have mm -hmm. a live stream coming up again. Hopefully it's going to be reoccurring on Thursdays with Psycho Stick. That's what we're hoping, yeah. Yeah, so that would be really cool. Is there anything else that you're coming up that you are looking forward to uh, that's uh, you're actually hoping... like? It, Think of it as it's still going to happen. Like, so in the next two weeks, probably not. But anything in 2020 that you're hoping is going to, like, for sure happen that you're planning on that you're looking forward to. You talking about just music stuff or in general? In general, too. Yeah, it could be anything. Okay. Um. Yeah, several things. I am starting a new class that I'm teaching at uh, Franklin University on motivation, and that's next week. And I'm teaching a neuropsychology class over the summer, also at Franklin, and that's nice. online. So that's been cool. Um. Yeah, we're doing a bunch of streams. For Psycho Stick, we have a couple songs in the works in the pipeline, Very and cool. it's pretty fun stuff. Um, I don't want to give too much away. No, no don't, uh, don't give yeah. any secrets away. That's fine. I don't want you to do that. Um, On a side note, I, love, far... I loved Sorry. the Rob Zombie cover for Christmas. We don't get many Christmas parodies anymore. That was fantastic. <laughs> so. We got a whole album. Where is it? Oh, yeah. I know, right you, here, I know like, you do. It's we a don't... whole whole album of christmas songs exactly when was the last time you heard like good like consistent christmas covers or parodies or anything like that it's not so much of a thing outside of you guys so it's kind of cool to hear that i think clown the, did the, one so the band goldfinger did a bunch of covers okay they, that's was, cool see i didn't it was even like, know that like a ska and, ska and punk and yeah. travis barker like my favorite drummer he was mm -hmm. playing with them too so i think it was like a year or two ago that they did that so that's that was pretty awesome know. okay so very cool but um also, over the summer, I'm filling in for the band Dog Fashion Disco on drums. Okay. For uh, So, hoping that the tour right. continues on. So, assuming yeah. that happens all June, like for three weeks in June, we'll be out and uh, playing a bunch of, you know, I have to learn 20 songs. So I've been working on that a lot lately, too. <laughs> you got the time right now. So, that's actually kind yeah, of nice. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's so, been a lot of fun. Like, they have a really fun part. So, it's been a lot of fun to do the whole I... different style. So, y'all yeah, be doing that. We're doing like three weeks um yeah there's a lot of little projects um yeah i don't want to give it okay you already too much because you, you already have plans i mean thursday thursday yeah, yeah. Stick, it's gonna take some time with you guys so that's something yeah. to look forward to also so again the link is in the comment in the description below i'll put it on the youtube card after this video is over so i'm gonna go scroll through um just to see if there's anything in the chat room if anyone has questions cool. there's a few i told them to there. ask um that they can ask like what our favorite vegetables are so we'll see okay. if they actually go through with that gotcha so everyone that's watching right now these um it's not so much there's some questions but there's also some just random safe statements psycho sick rocks uh from more, <laughs> from more on tv psycho sick are you guys ever going to come to pensacola florida pensacola florida um i have no plans to okay so i don't know <laughs> hey, hey never say never you know never say never yeah, yeah. Um, Leaf Christus, Alex is my favorite member of Psycho Stick. Do you want me to flex now, too? Yes, so that's from Leaf. Um, for uh, Psycho Stick, do you guys still have NSFW in your set list? Did you watch the stream? 
If you watch the stream, then you already know the answer. <laughs> if you check out the upcoming stream too, maybe you'll get a surprise. Who knows? I can't say. That's just me. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's just keep going. I think I changed my stage names. So don't. Um, Nix says N I X X. This book literally gets me through school and work. Very. Oh, good. I think I know who that is. Is that uh, is that Nikki? That's probably Nikki. It's it's a yeah, one, it's, um, a, it's a lady that's in the icon. So yeah, N I X X. Yeah, she's actually taken one of my classes in the over the summer. She already signed up. So I, I know exactly who that is. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. From bystander behind a mask. That's a that's an intense name. You don't like yeah, being referred to as a rock star, but you guys definitely deserve to be in the Rock Hall of Fame. That would be an intense... Has the cure been inducted yet? Because if they, yes, they haven't... Have. Two, two or three okay. years ago, yes, they have. Yes, I know that for a fact. <laughs> and then Nine Inch Nails is coming up, right? And they're, like they're, Nirvana they're and bands like that? Yeah, Nine Inch Nails, yes. I was going to say, like, there's some bands that need to come before us. Let's let's just be real about that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. See, that's a good, humble way to say it. So there is a priority, yeah. 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 Um, the YouTube chat for Psycho Stick just shouted Tube. Tube? Tube. So there you go. Do you go. know uh do you know the history of the tube? I I don't think I'm familiar. We have tube videos. So once okay. a year on usually April first, but we had to postpone it this year, we uh we sell tubes and it's a really strange phenomenon. Okay. But people have really embraced it and we've done it for five years now and people lose their minds for the tubes and it's completely insane. I don't know how else to explain it. You just have to watch the videos because they're all on I, YouTube, yeah, all five of them. I'm, I'm sure I'll learn really quick once I see the video. But yeah, I just I didn't yeah. I didn't expect tube to like lead to something. <laughs> so I didn't know someone was, yeah. like a mistype or something like that. No, uh, it's insane, and tube is the real thing. <laughs> so keep looking. Um, what's your favorite B-rate movie if you have one? I would have to say probably Death Machine. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, Brad Dorif, who played, he's like the creepy guy in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Like the real, uh, like that guy, he's the main character. Okay. And he builds a robot that senses fear. And it, the more afraid you are, the more it hones in and chases you and, and murders you. Huh. So it's like, it's like a shark, but a robot. I don't know. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, that one and Santa Slay, which has Goldberg, the wrestler with. guy. Yeah, yeah, Santa Slay is incredible. I watch it every year, and that's my girlfriend the right amount of cheese like... for my B rate. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's worth this. It's a spectacle in its own right, just to watch how that yeah. goes. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Alien Apocalypse with uh, with Bruce Campbell. I love that movie too. That one I don't know, but you said Bruce Campbell, so I'm assuming so. it's totally worth your time. Oh, sure. totally. Yeah. Um, Murphington asked to talk about Anonymous Rex. And what your favorite oh, scene yeah. is at Anonymous Rex. So this is something well, I worked with um, James Rolfer, Angry Video Game Nerd, briefly, correct? Correct. Okay. So Mervington is actually our video guy. He's the one who's been chatting with you and all okay, that. Okay, gotcha. Hey, Murph. Um, Yeah, Anonymous Rex, we've been trying to peddle this movie on everyone for years and years and I didn't years. even know about it until so, I saw that video with Angry Video Game Nerd. So Yeah, it's wonderful. So, yeah, when James Rolf, like Angry Video Game Nerd, reached out, well, when we connected with him, however that worked out, uh, he asked us, what movies do you want to do? And me and Murph, I forget which one of us said it first, but one of us basically said, uh, we got to do Anonymous Rex. And he's seen a lot of movies, but I don't believe he had seen that one. Uh -huh. So he's watching this thing, and I can just imagine, like, what the hell are they got me watching? Yeah. So when we finally get to meet in person, his reaction, that's completely genuine. That is 100% genuine, because we chatted a little bit about it before the video started, yeah. and he's like... What the hell did I just watch? <laughs> I just remember like you guys laughing at the one scene where they're trick or treating or something, and they take the dinosaur with them, and they think the dinosaur oh, yeah. is an actual kid. Oh yeah, it's like, it's such a good movie. So, in, in case you don't know, Anonymous Rex, the the premise of the story is that it's basically like a film noir, but with dinosaurs as private eyes because the dinosaurs didn't actually die out. They just evolved to be yeah. human sized. And so now they, they wear like costumes and holograms and stuff like that to fit into human society. So it's like one out of a thousand, whatever people is a dinosaur huh. and they're like just infiltrating society. And it's really bizarre. <laughs> I've heard some conspiracy films before, but uh, one out of every 1000 people are a dinosaur. That's a conspiracy mm. film. That's it might be one out of 10,000. I might be getting the stats wrong, but even so, it, it's anonymous like, Rex. <laughs> that still seems extremely high, even one out of 10,000. 
So yeah, that's I want to meet a dinosaur. That'd I be do cool. too. And also just like the pull off the wig. You're not a person. Shh. It's an actual T-Rex yeah. head or something like that. Man. Um, from Alex Dante. Where did Schmalix get his name from? Okay, so I used to be in a band called the Stuttering C -C -C Cowboys. Okay. And that was from 2004 to 2006. And our guitarist, Shane Leopard, uh, he just started calling me Schmalix because I used to work with him at uh, Music and Arts way back in the day. It was American Music, then it turned into Music and Arts, you know, 15 years ago, whatever yeah. it was, back in Arizona, in Mesa. And uh, he just called me Schmalix, and uh, I was in a band with him, and that kind of just sort of stuck. I mean, there's no real story to it beyond that, but yeah, um, yeah I just thought it was fun. <laughs> Schmalix is a good one. That's a good take on it. So that's smart for me. So with that, um, Psycho Stick, the account on YouTube says, sorry, Dante, Dante is cooler than Don Trey. <laughs> I'm reading that word for word, so I'll just let you. I'll let you have it. Also, before we start wrapping things up, I want to thank whoever's running the Psycho Six social accounts. Mm -hmm. However, when they shared out the event on Facebook, it wasn't like, "Hey, check out this interview with Alex tomorrow." It was, "Shut up, Alex." <laughs> that's it. See, that's the thing. Like, it's really bizarre that my arch enemy is actually my band. Huh. So I don't know why, but we have this very contentious relationship. Yeah. And I hate my band, and my band hates me. And is I want because, them is to... Is it because you're royalty? Is it because you are the king? It might be. Yeah. I want them to fail. Oh. But I'm in the band. So it's like a conflict of interest, and yeah. I don't know how to I can imagine to that makes that the world trips long. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So... Like, oh, God damn it, he's here again. <laughs> Yeah, on the bus where your stuff is. Yeah, I'll bet your stuff is. Like, oh, man, he found our bus again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so with that Made being, way back. Uh, so that being said, we got a lot of ewes, and I almost threw up when I hear this story. Yeah, so with the snot eater. So, again, thank you. That's yeah. eye-opening for me. That might – if that's the – that is the grossest one I've heard. So Thanks, Florida. Yeah, so <laughs> – yeah. Man, that, even for Florida standards, that seems very disturbing. I have to say. Yeah. So, Dude, we've been to uh, Florida many, many times, mm -hmm. like probably dozens of times for shows and everything. And that has only happened once. So to be fair, it's not this ongoing theme in true. the whole state. But the fact that it happened at all, yeah, I, uh, that's a to be fair, pretty big stain. You, every time you cross the Florida state line from Georgia, you're probably like, oh, no, is it going to happen I again? <laughs> oh, man. So, People who live there are like, damn it, <laughs> not again. <laughs> you're making us look bad. Yeah. Ugh. So we're going to start wrapping things up. If I know you have so many things going on, is there's anything you'd like to tell anyone, like talk about your book again, upcoming video, uh, live stream with Thursday, anything you'd like to give out there, I just leave this time for you. Yeah, I got that book, Dichotomies. If you want to give this a read, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the Psycho Stick site. It's all over the place. So give that a read. It's about my tale on tour while uh, pursuing a master's degree. <laughs> Um, yeah, we got the streams coming up probably every Thursday, but definitely this coming right. Thursday on March 26th at uh, 4 Central. So that's 5 Eastern, and you do the math for the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll be out on tour, hopefully, with Dog Fashion Disco in June. So that'll be a lot of fun, too. Awesome. So it's going to be gonna be a productive year. We're yeah. going to get a lot done. So hopefully a very uh, um, uh, hopefully a very like productive year. Hopefully a lot of things different coming up. Still working with yeah. Psycho Stick, Dog Fashion Disco. You guys, you'll be busy, but I think you like to be busy. I see that as a good trait for you. Yeah, that's the thing. I only started in college in 2011 because I started feeling complacent. And I do kind of explain that in the preface of the book. Like, I just, I felt like touring was no longer a challenge. I still enjoyed it, mm -hmm. but it was no longer a challenge for me at that time. I'm like, all right, I need a new project. I need to get my hands in something. So I didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to give up one goal for another goal, so I decided to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So now that's escalated into my crazy schedule that I have now. So <laughs> yeah, well, I, hey, if, if you can manage it, then that's all the more power to you. It's proven that you're doing it. So if you can actually achieve the masters and write a book and work with Psycho Stick and have your band hate you and you still succeed, then you're doing everything. Yeah. So, so I got to destroy them. I got to destroy a psycho true. stick. Exactly. So that's one of my life from goals. From within. You infiltrate from within. That's exactly what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. So there you go. It's a long-term goal. <laughs> psycho stick dies when I say it dies. And that'll be your <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame acceptance speech. 
Yeah. <laughs> when you finally take the stage and you can actually like, do yeah. it. Anyway. <laughs> I did it. So thank you guys again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, the link to check out and set a reminder for Thursday Psycho 6 live stream is below in the YouTube comments and also pinned right here. If you're watching this later than that, you can actually see the whole presentation live. It'll just be like on a backlog. So I thank you guys again. Check out Psycho Stick. Check out his book. Check out the Rob Zombie cover for the Christmas song, which is fantastic. And is there anything else you'd like to add on? Don't need other people's tissues. Just don't. You know, I think that's probably the best advice anyone can take right now, especially in this situation. Yeah. But at any time, don't ever, 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 ever eat anyone's yeah. tissues because I'm, I'm actually kind of upset that you have to explain that to people. <laughs> <laughs> so we now just made, we just made the video time. Left, so exactly. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I ended it right there, like as soon as it ended. So it's.